Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We thought we would take you guys on a tour of some of our fruit trees here on Deep South Homestead because this year we have really ramped up the fruit trees here at Deep South Homestead. We have purchased them from several different companies, not just one particular company. We did that because some companies would only ship bare root, some would ship in pots. So guys, today it's going to be bare root versus potted. Is there really a difference between the two? Now here beside me is a gurney's. This is a ruby sweet plum that we got. It was a bare root and it is doing fantastic. We put it out. Looks like it's going to kick in. Um, one thing about the bare roots, you cut a third off of the top of them. I did that and we've got it branching out. It looks really good at the point that it's at right now. So I think it's going to do good. Back here, we have another plum. Now this plum here uh, came from a farm in Alabama that raises fruit trees and we was able to get it as a potted plant. Now it is a lot larger. It is um, a lot larger trunk, a lot bigger tree because it was in a pot. It never did go through the transplant shock of being moved or anything like that. And then the rest of our orchard back here was all potted plants from a farm in Alabama. They're apples and pears. All of them are doing well. We have one in the back back there that's a little questionable. It's still living but the leaves on it are wanting to turn a little yellow. Could be from the drought that we're in right now. But they're all doing good. We water them on a regular basis. And it seems like, for the most part, the potted plants are doing good. But the bare root here from Gurney's is also doing well at the same time. Okay, this is another one of our bare root trees from uh, Gurney's. This is a Golden Dorset. It is kicked in. I cut the top out of it. It's doing really well right now. Down here we have another golden dorset from Gur Gurney's. It's doing good. We pruned it back. Got a good stock on the trunk. The tree itself is doing well. I think it's going to pull out. I think both of them are going to do really well. And then down here we have a Anna. Now this is a two-year-old tree. It is uh, It's doing really well. Now this one come from another company uh, over in the state of Alabama also. It's doing really well. Um, I think. No, wait a minute. I'm sorry. This one came from Walmart. This was a Walmart tree last year. This is the one. If you watch our videos, Miss Amanda from Freedom Makers and Miss Wanda planted. This is an apricot tree. We got this tree from an elderly lady that lives in our community. She raised trees in pots. We have uh, one apricot here and another apricot down below it here. We got from her and. They look like they're doing good. She uh, raises them in little small pots, and we take them and got them from her and plant them here beside the others. I think they're going to turn out very well. And here by the cabin, we have an Ein Shamir uh, from Florida. It was a potted plant. We have a Honeycrisp apple here from uh, Alabama. It was a potted plant, and both of these are doing pretty fair. This is a two-year-old tree. This is a one-year-old tree. So they're both, uh, looks like they're both going to do really well here by the cabin. Okay, here we have one of our miniature bananas. A subscriber sent these trees to us. We didn't know if they'd live, so we put them over here by the smokehouse. And guys, guess what? They're popping up. We got one here. Here's the other little one right here. We got to get them marked. We got to get some good soil around them, some fertilize. They're doing fantastic. We're excited about that. And then we come on back. We have our fig trees. This is one of my grandpa figs. Uh, we took a cutting off of the plant. We brought it back here. Look at this here, guys. Look at the size of that fig. It's still green. This is a one-year-old tree. Look at this. That's nice. This is an LSU fig we have here, LSU purple fig. We was going to try that out here at Deep South Homestead. The company was just getting rid of it because they thought that it had died, but I knew that the rootstock on them probably never dies. So I got it from them at a really good discount, and we brought it to Deep South Homestead, and it is doing fantastic. This here is one of our own brown turkey figs off of our trees here. We, uh, we rooted it ourselves to have over here at the cabin so that we have an assortment of figs over here at the cabin also. Over here at the cabin, we also have a couple of loquats that was given to us by a subscriber. We have one here, and we have one over here. 
We're hoping that they do well over here at the cabin. And then if I look to my left, we have a banana tree coming up right there. We planted a banana in here. So we'd have it in the background here at the cabin. We have a couple of more in the distance over here. If you look at it right here, there's a couple of banana trees right there we have growing just to kind of give us some beauty in the background here behind the cabin. Okay, this here was a gurney tree. This is a Granny Smith. We topped it. Got it in a good location here, I think. It's turning out the foliage on it is really dark green. Got some good soil there with it. And here we have a Whitney crab apple from Gurney's. Uh, these are bare root plants, both of these. We use this as a pollinator for the Granny Smith. I think it's gonna do good. The color's good, it looks good. I think everything's a go on this one. Also from Gurney's here, we have the, uh, the native plums. We have one here. And we have another one right here. I believe that this is gonna be a good location for them. When we say the word native here in the deep south, it kind of means it's like a wild plum to us. So we're probably going to have to keep them contained. They'll probably try to grow everywhere. But we love the small, wild, native plum. Okay, here is one of our pear trees over here at the cabin. This come out of Alabama. This is a potted plant. And it already, look at that, it already has a pear on it up there. Just one. That's okay, we'll leave it. It's not going to hurt the tree at all. But this is a potted plant and it's already, I'm six foot three, it's a little bit over my head. All right, guys, this here is one of the Gurney's trees. This was a bare root tree here. That's a lot different. You know, I had to cut it back some. It's about four foot tall. It's doing well. I think it's going to pull out and make it just fine over here at the cabin. Okay, we also have a, what's called a Fuyu persimmon tree over here at the cabin growing. We have some of our peach trees in the background here that we've raised ourselves. Uh, they're doing really good. They've been here for several years now. One of them actually has a bunch of peaches on it. The others don't really have any peaches yet because they're not old enough. All right, guys, we're on the back side of our hugel bed now. Uh, we're trying to use it like a swale now to capture some of the water, let the nutrition feed some of our trees here. We planted a peach tree that we grew from a seed here, actually. Didn't know what it would do, but hey, it's making peaches. It's a beautiful tree. It's luscious and green. It looks like it's going to do okay. It's got several little small peaches stuck up under it. They may be small. I don't know. It was just a seedling, but hey, it might produce peaches for us one day. This was a, a branch off of an apple tree. I followed the advice of an elderly lady who told me how to plant it. I put it in the ground. Guys, well, uh, it's grown up. Now, it ain't, it's kind of misshapen and stuff like that because it Got hit with a lawnmower one time. The wind blew it over one time. We stood it back up. But hey, it looks like it's going to make a beautiful apple tree one day. Also on the back of the hugel bed here from the gurneys, we have the Manchurian uh, apricot tree. It's a bush tree. We have it planted here on this end here. And then we also have, these are just wild apricots here. We have them, uh, we purchased these from a, elderly lady that we was talking about a couple of years ago and we know they're wild because they have sprouts coming up everywhere we got to get in here and cut these sprouts out and we're trying to let the trees go and grow as fast as they will uh, some of them are doing better than others this one has made a really big tree it loaded up with blooms this year uh, but we had a little bit of a cool snap come through knocked all the blooms off of it so maybe Maybe next year, we got the Manchurians over there. We got three more over here. Uh, this here is one of the other Manchurians that we have from Gurney's here. It's uh, doing really well. We have another one here. Seems to be doing okay. And then we have our final one right here. Looks like it's doing fine also. And guys, we have our pineapples that we've been saving here at Deep South Homestead. Uh, we took them out of the greenhouse and brought them out here and look what has happened to one of them that we took out of the greenhouse. It has a baby pineapple on it. Every year at Deep South Homestead, we have been blessed to have two to three baby pineapples that grows into beautiful pineapples that the taste is amazing. Some of these are one year old, some of them two year old, some of them three years old. A couple of three years ago, we planted some chestnuts on the place here. This one seems to be doing the best. Uh, it, I believe it's going to turn out and do well. We haven't had but 
I think we had one chestnut on it the last year, but this year it doesn't look like it's going to have any on it. We have another one planted right over here to this side. It is not quite as well as this one here is. And then in the background, back down the hill here, we actually have another one planted down there. And we have a peach that's come up here. This is just no wild seedling. Got a peach on it. It's amazing, these seedlings just continually put out peaches. We'll probably leave it just to see what it does. And if it doesn't turn out to be anything, then we'll chop it down in the future. But right now, we're just gonna leave it. As we look down right here in front of us here, this is blueberries. We have 50 trees in a blueberry orchard here. Off the top of the hill here, you can look down and you can see them. We have gathered, I'm gonna probably say close to 40 gallons of blueberries off of these this year. It's been a blessing here at Deep South Homestead to have these blueberries in this orchard here. This is another one of our apple trees here. This little tree's struggling, but we keep doctoring it and keep working with it. Hopefully one day it'll grow up to make a good apple tree too. It's out here by our blueberries um, all by itself, but it seems like it's going to make it. And then in the background here, now this is a miniature um, mulberry tree. The mulberries on it don't get over about maybe a half an inch long, but they are so super sweet. Um, and it's, it stayed just a little tree for so long, but this past year, Man, it has took off and it has finally decided to make a nice tree. Hey, this was a wild crab apple I dug up out of the woods a couple of years ago and planted out here. And I got the wild notion, I wanted to graft it. So I came in, I cut that limb off, I cut this limb off, and I grafted it right in the middle right here with an Anna apple. And guys, look at this. Look at that. We have three little apples on it, so it's actually going to do good. And I think right over here, if you look over here even, look right here, there's four more over here. So it looks like the graft is gonna take, it's gonna make apples. It looks like it's gonna do pretty good. So we're excited to have a grafted apple tree from a wild tree here. Now, I don't know how long this right here is gonna work. I hope it grows and blends in with the tree and it don't break off one day is what I'm hoping. Uh, Cause it was just an experiment for me, but hey, it's working. All right, we're at Miss Wanda's pomegranate tree. This is her favorite tree right here. And look at this guys. Look at the pomegranates. They're just hanging everywhere. I mean I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine right here. I mean these things are loaded. We're trying to be very careful with it that it don't break the tree up but and then we've got like three right there. More up at the top. I mean they're everywhere in this little tree right here. This tree came from an elderly lady that we told you about a while ago. She raised it from a cutting off of her pomegranate tree and blessed us with one of her cuttings. And we brought it here and it has actually took off and started growing. And we're excited to believe that we might actually have pomegranates here at Deep South Homestead. All right, guys, we have one of our trees here. It's one of my favorite trees is the mulberry tree. This is a large mulberry. This is a five-year-old tree. I mean, look how it has took off. I've really took care of it. And it seems like it's going to do fine. This year has been a bumper year for it. It really took off and started growing this year. Like it got its root system finally established and it's doing really well. Uh, this is another big mulberry tree that we have there. It's a little bit, uh, they're both planted at the same time. That one's just trying to get its root system established where it can take off. And then right beside it here, this is our flowering crab apple. We use this tree as a pollinator to pollinate our apple trees with here at Deep South Homestead. And it has the little miniature crab apples. They're hanging all over it here on the limbs. The birds love them. It keeps them out of everything else that we have. And it's a beautiful tree just to look at. I think it's gonna be really nice to have it here. It helps to pollinate any and all of our apples here. Okay, this is a big tree that my grandfather had. Um, he got it from his father. And this is the one that makes the big old giant figs on it, guys. This thing is loaded. I have probably the only tree left, I guess, from the original stock. It is a huge fig. This fig still has a long way to go before it gets ripe. They're on here everywhere, the big figs. I mean, it's just amazing at how many figs this one tree has on it. The one over at the cabin we showed you earlier is a mate to this one here. It's all for the same root stock. Okay, guys, in the backyard here at Deep South Homestead, I have two pecan trees. This is one of them. Uh, one of them is a Cape Fear. 
Uh, this tree, believe it or not, is close to 20 years old. It just has not done much. Uh, this year I decided to really start ramping it up, did a soil test, got the soil analysis back. We put what the tree needed, and it is the first year it's had pecans on it. And it is loaded with pecans. I mean, no matter what limb I pull down, every limb I pull down has pecans on it. Wherever I look on the tree here, if I reach and grab another one, they all have pecans. And I am so excited, and I'm just praying that the good Lord lets me have a harvest off of this tree. Now I also have another one in the background back here. It's not quite as big as this one. It's the same age. And it is also loaded with pecans this year. And in the background, if you see the pink blooms back there in the background, that is a mimosa tree. We have them around here. They make good shade trees. They don't make a big mess. Okay, this is a big tree I've had here for many years, guys. And this year, last year it had nothing. This year, it is loaded. Usually every year this tree is loaded. Last year, like I said, didn't have anything on it. But this year, it seems like every small spot on this tree has figs on it. I pruned it back some this year, and I believe that it made a difference. And plus, the weather's been good. The weather's been really good for figs this year. So we're excited. This tree usually bears us anywhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 gallons of figs a year and i believe this year if nothing happens it may top that because it's got more figs on it this year than i think i've ever seen it have on it all right this is one of our pears now this is a very hard pear but it's a very prolific pear it's one that usually has pears on it regardless and this tree is actually loaded i don't know if the camera's doing it any justice or not but the limbs are bowed over because there's pears hanging on it everywhere up there. And I did something this year with this pear tree, guys. A friend of ours, a subscriber, uh, Mr. Oki Rob from Oklahoma, actually sent me some graphs. And I came in here just for the fun of it and put some graphs in this tree. I stuck a graft in this tree right here. I stuck it on a little limb I cut off because I didn't know if it would actually make it or not. But look at this. It has actually took, guys. I actually have a different type of graft in this tree from Mr. Oki Rob. He sent me, thank you, Rob. I didn't know if it would work or not. I've done it, and it worked. Guys, this is another pear tree we have here. This is what we call the moon glow pear. This thing hardly ever has pears on it. This year, I mean, she's loaded with pears this year. We are excited, but we're also concerned with the hurricane that may be forming out in the Gulf that we could lose them all this year and we are just sitting back hoping and praying that the good lord is good to us and don't let us lose them because this is the most pears this tree has ever bore in its life since we've owned the tree all right guys we have one of our other pear trees here by the chicken pen uh, i don't actually know the name of this one because uh, it's been so many years but it is such a huge tree and it has so many pears on it we're just praying that this year is going to be a bumper crop and the good Lord's good to us. And we're able to even save these. These are so soft and so sweet and they taste so good. There's literally hundreds and hundreds of pears up on this pear tree here. And you have to look close because they hide up in there. But they're there everywhere. All the limbs straight up above them hanging out. Look at some of these hanging out here, guys. Everywhere you look, if you pick the limbs up, up under it, look at them hanging on the ends out yonder. Literally loaded. And also right here beside our pear trees in the chicken pen, as the water comes through the chicken pen, it fertilizes the pear trees and it fertilizes this muscadine. This is a purple muscadine here. This vine is probably, I don't know, it's probably 30 years old. I keep it pruned back and guys, this baby loads up with muscadines every year. So we're hoping that this year we get a good crop of muscadines on it, just like we have in all the previous years. All right, here up by the house, we have our Louisiana orange. Guys, this tree is just amazing. It, uh, it produces so many oranges each year. I mean, it doesn't matter where you look in the tree. It's just oranges everywhere. We try to take care of it, do the best we can with it. We keep thinking every year the freezes is going to get it, but it keeps hanging in there. It probably had over a thousand oranges on it in the beginning, but it has shed a lot of them off. That's what they normally do. 
and it has about the right amount now. I would say it's probably got maybe 100 to 150 on it right now. The most we've ever got is in the 60s, so it's possible that we may have that many this year. Only time will tell. Okay, here going into the house, we have a white peach that I actually, this is one of my creations that I came up with. Uh, we planted a seed and kind of done some budding and different things on it, and I've created this white peach here. We've got peaches off of it a few years that were just to die for. Huge, big old white peaches. But this past year it bloomed out good, but there again, the cold right at the end got it because it's an early bloomer and we didn't get any peaches this year, but when we do get them, it is well worth it. All right, what we have here is our bronze scuppernongs. We got probably a hundred feet of them down through here on a very long arbor. They are loaded with muscadines, guys. They had a good pollination this year. And look at them hanging in there. We're hoping that this year we get to harvest a good bit of muscadines. We look up and they're just everywhere you look up under them leaves. They hide in there so well. We've got a hundred feet of them down through yonder. We're hoping to be able to have enough this year to squeeze and make our own juice to drink and maybe have a little bit of extra muscadine jelly and stuff like that. But in the background you see some treetops sticking up here. These are our mayhaws. They've already came in. Ms. Wanda's already harvested them. We have them in the freezer, actually ready to make juice out of, to make jelly whenever we get ready to. Okay, guys, here I have a little plum tree here. This one's kind of a special tree to me. A friend of ours that lived in uh, just outside of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, brought us one of their, several of the plums off of their family's property there. And that was an old heirloom variety on the property there. And uh, you know me. I kept some of the seeds and I planted one of them and now I have this plum tree from there that I'm hoping actually turns out to be one of the same big red plums like they had. Um, well only time will tell. It's growing. It's doing good. I think we'll be fine. I'll probably end up having to cut this one little tree out right here and then shaping this up but I think it's going to do fine here at Deep South Homestead. Alright I'm at one of my other plum trees here. Now this was a wild plum that come out of the woods. And guys, you know me, I had to experiment. I came in and I put a tame plum graft on the side of the tree here, right on the side of it there. I didn't know if it would take or not, but guess what? It took and it, uh, it's done good. It's growing on to it here. I'm trying to make a decision now whether I want to cut the wild part off and let the tame grow on up, or if I want to just leave them both and use one as a pollinator for the other one. Uh, time will tell. It's kind of low to the ground. Uh, I'll have to really think about that. And here is another one of the wild ones here. I had grafted it with a tame plum, but it was sticking way off out to the side here, and I just didn't want it here, so I cut it off. Uh, but it was doing okay. But this is just strictly a wild plum here. Uh, we haven't had any plums on it yet. It bloomed out this year for the first time, but just like the apricot, it's a late cool spell. Uh, got the blooms on it, so we didn't have anything to actually pollinate with this year. And then I have one more here, a big red purple plum here. I don't actually know the name of it. It's been so many years since I set this tree out. But it's finally growing up, getting some size to it. And just like the others, it flowered out. But the late cold got it. And we don't have any plums on it, but hey, maybe next year we'll have some plums. All right, guys, just like we started out in the beginning, this is a tree from Gurney's. I have another one right here from Gurney's. Both of these are Albertas. They were both bare root. They're both doing really well for their size. They've taken hold really well, doing good. And guys, I'll be honest with you. The potted trees, yes, they're way ahead of these, but I really won't know for another couple of years as to whether or not the bare root catches up with the potted tree, um, I can't say as of yet. I just know the, the bare roots are doing well from gurneys. Haven't had any problems out of any of them. They're all hanging in there. They're all taking off. They're growing fine. Um, in the description down below, I will leave a link to gurneys. Um, as a matter of fact, probably in the next couple of weeks we're probably going to be getting a few more trees from gurneys we'll be showing you them 
when we get them in because these have done so well we decided to go ahead and get a couple more uh, because we just feel like here at Deep South Homestead we want to have a permaculture type of environment around our place here. We want something growing and producing most of the time here at Deep South Homestead of some kind of fruit of, or nut or something other uh, to keep our food supply going should the food chain break down and we can't go and get any type of fruits or vegetables anywhere we want deep south homestead to be a self-sustainable place and guys we think we've proven that bare root potted whichever way you want to go i don't think it really matters i think they both do really well because here i think we've proven that here at deep south homestead so guys i hope you've enjoyed the true the tour of our fruit trees uh, here at Deep South Homestead and our nut trees and different other trees we have. Um, I hope it's been an encouragement to you and maybe you can get out and plant some trees of your own. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.